Hello everyone and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. In today's session, we are going to discuss the daily quiz for 11th of February 2024. Before we begin, a quick announcement that if you are somebody looking to prepare for UPSC Civil Services examination, then we can get you in touch with our experts. If you want to get in touch with our experts, please fill the form given below. Now let's start with question number one. Question number one says, which of the following statements best describes the purpose of the National Creators Award? National Creators Award as mentioned in the article. Now, this article is what we are talking about and this is something that came in PIB. Now, this is for the first time where the Government of India now has announced something called as the National Creators Award to celebrate India's digital creator economy and its impact. Now, there are more than 20 categories that has been announced by the government that in all these 20 categories, the creators, the digital creators of India will be awarded in one way or the other. So that is what exactly it is about. And it is talking about creator economy and how digital creators can also help in transforming the economy and contribute to the development of Indian economy. So if you look at from that perspective, the options that we have, the first is to provide financial assistance assistance to digital creators in India, which is not correct. The second one is to recognize and celebrate digital innovators and content creators for their contributions to India's digital landscape. Now this is what seems to be correct and that's why the correct option here will be B. So now this is a new award and that's why I would say that this becomes important and this was published in yesterday's PIB. Then question number two. Question number two talks about some minerals and the use that we have for this mineral. Now why this question? This is something that we have taken from today's Indian Express and in today's Indian Express this is an article, a very very important article that has been published. India to leverage US led partnership to get critical mineral assets from abroad. Now here we are talking about all the critical minerals and how they become important and how India is going to use its partnership with the US and something called as mineral security partnership and how mineral security partnership becomes a very key aspect of getting all these critical minerals. Now when we say critical minerals there are a lot of these minerals that India has been looking towards. It is for example whether it is cobalt or lithium or graphite all these that have been mentioned in your question as well and apart from that also the other ores like iron ore etc coal also is something that we are looking at so where it comes to all the critical minerals and especially the minerals which are important from the perspective of the environment where we are looking towards not only a financial and an economic value that they have but at the same time how they also have environmental value and in that context lithium cobalt uh, uh, limestone graphite iron ore all these things become very very crucial and that's why we are talking about how exactly we can go abroad, we can go to various countries. For example, countries like uh, Argentina has been mentioned, Bolivia has been mentioned, Australia, Chile has been mentioned. So these are the countries where we can go and we can get some of these critical minerals from there. So that's why it will have not only an economic impact, but also will have an environmental impact. And this is exactly what it is talking about that how uh, India is going to leverage its partnership, the MSP partnership and involve all the PSUs um, in India. So for example, NTPC can be involved here, sale can come into the picture, coal India can come into the picture, NIL can come into the picture. So there are all these that can be taken into account and this is exactly uh, what this uh, article is talking about. Now, on the basis of this article, we have this question for you and this question talks about four minerals and how we look at the use of these minerals. So the first one is lithium and the use says used in anodes of lithium ion batteries. Now in the anode of the lithium ion batteries, we use graphite. So that's why this is not correctly matched. Second is cobalt enhances energy density and battery life in lithium ion batteries. This is correct. This is correct and this is exactly where we need cobalt and that's why this is correctly matched. Third is graphite, key component in battery technology for electrical vehicles, electric vehicles and renewable energy storage systems. Now this is not wrong, this is not correct. This is basically about lithium. So that's why wrongly matched. And then lastly, high purity limestone 
raw material in steel making and for environmental applications such as flue gas desulfurization. So this is correctly matched. So for example, when it comes to flue gas desulfurization, it's a method that we use in the coal industry in uh, coal fired thermal power plants so that we can reduce the amount of sulfur dioxide emissions that might happen in this entire process. So this is where flue gas desulfurization is used and limestone plays a very very important role in desulfurization. So that's why this is correct. So there are two of these which are correctly matched and this is exactly what your the question is asking. So the correct answer here will be only two. So two out of these four have been matched correctly. Moving on, looking at the next question. Consider the following in the context of white hydrogen. Degassing of deep hydrogen from earth's crust and mantle. Water in contact with freshly exposed rock surfaces. Decomposition of organic matter biological activity and nuclear reactors how many of the above can be considered as a source of white hydrogen now what do we even mean by this white hydrogen this is in the context of an article that you have in today's the hindu on the science page where it talks about deep earth hydrogen reservoir drives outgassing now what does it exactly say it has been talking about a particular mine that we have in Albania, a chromium mine that we have in Albania and how exactly we see that there is an outgassing of hydrogen. Now outgassing of hydrogen means that this is where hydrogen is being emitted or it is something that can become a source of hydrogen for us and this is a source of natural hydrogen. Now this natural hydrogen is something that we also call as white hydrogen. So when we say white hydrogen here, the meaning of white hydrogen meaning of white hydrogen is natural hydrogen or hydrogen from natural sources sometimes it is also called as gold hydrogen so natural hydrogen wherever let's say any mining activities any mineral mining where we can normally directly get hydrogen they can be called as natural hydrogen or they can also be called as white hydrogen. Now, when we look at white hydrogen and the reserves that we have for white hydrogen, we see that this can be a very crucial aspect of the future, the energy future that we talk about. Usually, we always talk about hydrogen in the context of green hydrogen and how we can make hydrogen in, a, and in an environmental, environmentally friendly manner. But here, it is something which is giving you a natural resource which is even more crucial than uh, green hydrogen. Now in this context, the estimates say that these kind of mines can give you more than 50,000 tons of hydrogen. So just imagine the kind of reservoir, the kind of resource that we are speaking of. So this is the context in which this has, uh, talk, uh, this has been discussing in this article and what we... Uh, see in this mine specially is that more than 200 tons of hydrogen every year is emitted from here and that's why it can become a big source of hydrogen and we should look into all these things as well so natural hydrogen so out of the five options that you have the five uh, sources that you have four of these sources can be said to be the natural sources so that's why these four can be counted as white hydrogen whereas when it comes to nuclear reactors this cannot be counted as natural and there is a name that is given to this kind of hydrogen we usually call it as pink hydrogen the hydrogen that you get from nuclear reactors can also be called as pink hydrogen so that's why four of these have been marked uh, have been given correctly so only four are correct and the fifth one is not correct moving on question number four consider the following statements now here the context of this question is another article that we had in yesterday's PIB where we say that Indian Institute of Technology Khadapur, IIT Khadapur signed an agreement <coughs> with CDOT for developing prototypes for 10 gigabit capable symmetric passive optical network, optical line terminal and optical network unit. Now let me first explain you what are these three units and what exactly do we mean by these concepts. Now usually when it comes to the internet, we know that internet providers will be using fiber optics, correct? And this is a part of the fiber optic network and hence this becomes crucial because 
with the signing of this and once they start working on this they'll be able to provide affordable broadband and mobile phone internet this is exactly why this has been signed why this agreement has been signed so that india can get affordable mobile phone and broadband internet network now just break in the break it down and try to understand what do we mean first we are talking about something called as passive optical network right passive optical network or pon passive optical network now in this optical network there are two types of at optical network one called as active and one called as passive now active optical network will be the ones where you are providing active electric source where active electrical power is being supplied whereas in case of passive optical network we do not provide any active power source so that's why pon or passive optical network now in this when we say symmetric symmetric passive optical network it means that the upstream and the downstream activities or the speeds will be similar so just understand this upstream and downstream both will give you similar speeds now when we say similar speeds it means that if let's say uh, the upload and the download stream in in very simple terms you are talking about uploads and the downloads so for example let's say when you are watching this lecture you are downloading all right when you are watching this lecture you are downloading so that is downstream and if you were uploading the lecture then it is upstream so upstream is uploading and downstream is downloading so when you have exactly same speed or similar speeds with regards to both uploads and downloads it is called as symmetrical network so that's why we are talking about 10 gigabit capable symmetric passive optical network which will help in providing very good downloads and uploads at the same time so it will not only be useful in browsing of the internet and watching everything on the internet but at the same time it will also help in video conferencing in attending meetings and also the creators will be helped so that's why we are looking at a symmetric passive optical network and in this context pons have two parts one called as olt that is optical line terminal olt and the second part is the optical network unit onu now olt basically belongs to the central hub where from all the uh, internet is being provided all the data is being provided so that central hub the central office will be called as the optical line terminal and all the end users users like you and me we would be called as the optical network units so that's why all these individual users will be optical network units and the basic provider will be the optical line terminal and both are connected via passive optical network something like this that you start from the olts you start from the olts this is going to provide all the network and there will be a splitter which will split all this into various users so that's why all these users will have their own optical network unit and this entire setup will be called as passive optical network now look at the options given the statements given the statement number 1 says optical line terminal is a device located at the end users premises end users premises that convert optical signals received from the service provider into electrical signals that can be used by the end users devices this is wrong this exactly is what this is the end user end network user so that's why this is wrong so statement number 1 is not correct statement 2 optical network unit is situated at the service provider central office now this is also wrong because this is what optical line terminal would be so that's why this is also wrong the third one says a passive optical network is a broadband network technology that utilizes active optical components active optical components like amplifiers and repeaters to distribute the signal from a single fiber optic line to multiple homes or buildings now there is no active optical net component here we are talking about a passive network where you do not need active electrical power supply so that's why even this is wrong so all the three statements given here are not correct so correct answer here will be d moving on one question that we have from previous year in the context of recent advancements of human reproductive technology pro nuclear transfer is used for now pro nuclear transfer is something that has been in the news also last year because for the first time 
a commercial pro nuclear transfer has been done last year in the month of may and that's why it has come back in the news and this is where we in a manner are doing mitochondrial replacement this is useful in mitochondrial replacement so where if a mother's mitochondria are defective then the same mitochondria can also be transferred to the child and that's why the child will also have the same mitochondrial disease that the mother has to prevent this this kind of technique is used so that's why if you look at the options given option d says this prevention of mitochondrial diseases in the offspring because these mitochondria otherwise would be transferred from the mother to the child to prevent that from happening this is a procedure that is used now coming to the fact of the day this is about lymphatic filariasis now this also has been in the news and yesterday's pib had mentioned this that here there is a mass drug administration campaign that the government wants to start for lymphatic filariasis and especially for the elimination in very crucial states where the numbers are very high the states like bihar uttar pradesh jharkhand west bengal these are the states where the primary focus is and then apart from that also states like chatisgarh madhya pradesh etc are also included in the scheme so this is exactly what they are going to do and the the basic idea here is that we are looking at an elimination by 2027 there is a world target that has been kept for the elimination of lymphatic filariasis and this is about 2030 that it should be eliminated by 2030 but india is taking a target of 2027 so this is the context in which this news has come so if you look at the data with regards to lymphatic filariasis uh, what you basically see is that filariasis or elephantiasis as it is called it is also called as neglected tropical disease neglected tropical disease and it is something which is you can say pretty much located or uh, kind of endemic in areas of the gangetic plains in india and there the number of cases are pretty high and overall when you look at the number of cases for example in india it has been reported in 339 districts out of 20 states out of which when we look at the data what we understand is most number of cases actually are coming from only a few states in india so for example if you see uttar pradesh bihar jharkhand west bengal chatisgarh maharashtra and odisha and mp they contribute to 90% of all the cases so that's why this is a big number uh, that we look at when it comes to this particular disease overall when it comes to this disease there are few things that you should know about what exactly the disease is normally there is culex mosquito and some of the other mosquitoes that can spread this and there is a parasite a worm that will get into the body and then it will start uh, affecting the lymphatic system or the lymphatic vessels in our body which can lead to uh, symptoms where we might see that there will be swollen limbs or even in the genitals it can affect so that's why there are all these things and overall the risk factor that we see is that there are more than 850 million people worldwide that can be that are affected currently so overall that's why large scale elimination is required that's why this mass campaign is being started by the government of india so that they can start looking towards how uh, these steps can be taken and not only the vaccination steps but at the same time also uh, the cleaning steps and all the steps that is that are needed to also stop the breeding of the mosquitoes so some of those methods can also be used in this context so that is what exactly we are looking at and this is the program that the government of india is starting all right so with this we come to the end of this session today thank you very much for joining